there is a little bit of a crisis of confidence uh, within Congress about the intelligence community writ large and the conflict that has been laid bare by a very brave, I think, and appropriate speech given by Dianne Feinstein on the floor of the Senate about the serious policy disagreements between CIA that was being subjected to congressional oversight, I think has uh, made it incumbent on the intelligence community uh, to be as transparent as possible with Congress while protecting uh, the classification of information that is important for our national security. In that regard, I am curious as to why the number of contractors and the cost of contracts has been classified. In many cases, our relationships with specific contractors is um, classified or sensitive at their request. So we we're not asking. I'm not saying that you name them. I'm talking about how many there are and how much it costs. I'd be glad to take that on and, and look at giving you an updated. I think it's classified because you get away with saying things are classified because it's the intelligence community. I mean, here's the interesting thing. I don't think it helps the enemy to know the ratio of federal employees to contractors. I don't think that's a problem um, for our intelligence community in terms of jeopardizing our national security. And what's really interested is, interesting is we're paying Booz Allen, Hamilton, for administrative support services, um, but we can't even talk about how much we're paying them or how many there are, but they've got it on their website. So, uh, you know, if they have it on their website, um, they talk about doing work for the intelligence community on their website. So I, I just think there is it's a time where there needs to be a little bit of a gut check in the intelligence community. When you have somebody like Senator Feinstein, who is, she's a workhorse, not a show horse. Uh, she is someone who understands the sensitive nature of the responsibility she has as chairman of the intelligence committee. When she rips into our intelligence community in a public way, you got a problem. And I think everything you can do to show that you accept oversight of Congress is really important, including um, not classifying stuff that, frankly, there's no good reason for it to be classified, uh, especially when this, the people you're supposedly wanting to protect their identity are advertising it on their websites. So I would appreciate some kind of specific answer as to why the ratio of contractors to federal employees and why the cost of those contractors would be considered classified information. The usual, we will of course give you a more detailed answer. The usual um, calculus is that if you have a total number and a number of people are, declare their part, you start subtracting and you get what's left and that's the people and relationships that need to be protected and want to be protected. So, but you deserve an answer and we'll get you back a detailed yeah. one because we are committed to engagement. I, um, I personally spend a great deal of my time reading intelligence from around the world and I know just what a society that does not have oversight looks like. It is incredibly valuable. It is the thing that allows us to do that which we must do in secret in an open society. There is no other way to make it work. So we are committed to that. Director Clapper has been leaning forward and pushing transparency initiatives. We have released thousands of pages of documents, which, as you know, is countercultural. Yeah. Um, and it has required an intense reexamination, and we are continuing to push that across the intelligence community. I think right. um, that's terrific, right. and I want to be very encouraging in that regard, because I do think um, if there is a sense that we cannot conduct oversight, then we begin to have the unraveling of the very foundation of the intelligence community that is necessary for the protection of our country. We cannot function without adequate and trusted oversight. Senator Tester and Mikulski and Coates and Collins and I have introduced legislation to make the NSA IG a presidentially appointed mm -hmm. Senate confirmed position. Um, as you know, the current NSA IG is appointed to by and reports to the NSA director. Um, do you agree that a presidentially appointed Senate confirmed IG um, at NSA might be seen as more independent and more receptive to complaints of alleged abuse at the agencies? I believe that that's the way that um, most folks in Congress see it. And I've spent my career working under presidentially appointed IGs and with 
and they have been incredibly valuable contributors to our joint enterprise because they allow me to look at and see things that I might have missed otherwise. Do you have any opinion, and if you don't, if you could take this for the record, I would like some kind of weighing in by the administration about uh, expanding our whistleblower protections to contractors within the intelligence community? We'll take that for the record. Uh, it, it's a little tricky. Yeah. I, I get that. Um, but, you know, I've worked a lot in, in this space with DOD. Mm -hmm. um, when you have employees, and we have this at DOD, we have it at uh, DHS, and we have it in the intelligence community, when you have a row of carols, and you've got contractor, federal employee, contractor, contractor, federal employee, federal employee, contractor, and they're all doing the same work, there is no reason why the ones that are contractors should not have the identical whistleblower protection as their colleagues that they're working shoulder to shoulder with. And I, I think it's very important in every part of our government to have whistleblower protections for everyone who is working on behalf of the federal government. And I would like uh, some kind of weigh-in from the administration about their support for that concept. 